on today's show. The Clippers make it six in a row, 11 out of the last 14. Kawhi Leonard is playing at an MVP level, and James Harden just topped his best game with a Clipper as a Clipper with his new best game as a Clipper as the Warriors come to Los Angeles and take two L's within the last week. That's all coming up on today's Locked On. you got to be joking about how good we freaking are right now, Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darren Vaziri, born and raised in L.A. in my 19th season as a Clipper fan and just came back from my 10th game of the season. It is 12.45 a.m. I am so tired. My head is pounding from screaming. One thing I got to stop doing is not drinking water. I just be going to the games, getting a drink, and screaming my lungs out, standing up the whole game in 207. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so dehydrated. But here we are, and the Clippers have won six straight. And Locked on Clippers is free and available on all your favorite podcast platforms, including YouTube, where I want you to subscribe and let me know anything. I, mean, I, don't, even know, <laughs> I don't even know what I want you guys to tell me. Just tell me anything. Give me your thoughts on how this is going. How about the way James Harden was playing defense? How about the way Kawhi Leonard was playing defense? How about the Brewmaster? Are you kidding me? And this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Oh my God. Clipper Nation. This is my. All time high right now as a locked on Clippers host. There's no doubt. You can argue that our one playoff win against the Suns was the highest I've been, you know, the, the highest high, the most excited, because it is a playoff win. But in the regular season last year, there was no point. One, where the Clippers looked this good. Two, where Kawhi Leonard, eh, never mind. Well, I will say this where Kawhi Leonard looked this good on both ends. He looked incredible offensively and good defensively. But this is like, if he continues playing like this, this is all defense level type conversation. For a guy who's had so many serious injuries and has a degenerative knee and is still playing at this high level. And, but this is, yeah, this is the highest high I've had. We, had, we Our longest winning streak last season was five. And that was the, that pre-Russell Westbrook, Terrence Mann as the de facto point guard period. Now we're at six straight wins. 11 of the last 14. Remember, we were 3-7. and seven. And then the one thing that changed everything, the thing I thought was, was never going to happen. You know, people, because James Harden's playing so well, which I'm not surprised, but I'll tell you what I am surprised by, though, and I'll talk about that in the second segment. But the, the sheer performance of James Harden offensively, I'm not surprised at this at all because I know who James Harden is contrary to what you might believe. I did say, when you, if you really go back and listen to what I was saying, instead of just like, you know, wanting to hate on me, because it's normal, you know, when you have strong takes and, you, and it triggers people's emotions. Uh, and I am, and, and, you know, I've been wrong about things on this show. I was wrong about Westbrook and stuff like that. And I could be wrong about Harden, you know, down the line. It's all about the playoffs with Harden for me, as I've said many times. But people that care more about what I have to say, they don't, they don't actually, they're not actually listening. James Harden is one of the best top 75 players ever, but he's one of the best regular season players ever much higher than top 75 if you want to if you want to start you know making lists the thing that i was so worried about was that everything i had heard about was that russ was not going to come off the bench and that's really what has triggered this is that whoever made the decision whatever they did to put russ on the bench i know i wanted harden on the bench but at the end of the day it just matters one of them being on the bench i still think harden is better than russ right now but i like that russ had kind of earned his starting spot you know what i'm saying so i want i felt it was fair to leave him in that but the point is the the whole goal is for the Clippers to win games and for them to have won 11 out of the last 14 even though James Harden and Russell Westbrook shared the court 
and had some good moments in this game, had some not so good moments towards the second stint of it. The way Russ is bought in, even with games that he's had less than 20 minutes, when I say buy in, I mean buy in so far. You never know how it could go down the line. But I really believe, just judging by his body language, when the Clippers are winning games, a lot of times Russ has something to do with that. And he wants to feel like he's a part of a championship team, I think, more than he wants to feel like he's the man, and he everyone can see it, of a mediocre or not so good team at this point of his career. Like, again, I tweeted it a couple of days ago, but I think Russ's fans, a lot of them are being very selfish. They want him to play more minutes because that's what they want to watch. They know that that's how he can be maximized as a player. Everybody knows Russ is not being maximized as a player right now, but the Clippers are being maximized as a team. And this is a team sport. And what matters is winning, not numbers. And I'll tell you a number, 11 and 3. Since we made this change, and I thought the I think the Clippers defensively have just been spectacular of late. You know, communication-wise, knowing their schemes. Obviously, we have very switchable personnel and throwing a guy like Terrence Mann in the starting lineup is always going to help the defensive side of things, the athleticism side of things. But in this game, we didn't have Paul George. And this is really why you bring in a James Harden for games without one of the stars. And Paul George was out with the groin, I'm sorry, not groin, the hip injury. But it doesn't. he was questionable before the game. So it sounds like it's not too serious, which is huge. You know, we the, at the end of the day, hard in trade, no hard in trade. The key to this team being successful in the regular season was always going to be the health of two one three. And to have Paul George play twenty three out of twenty four games and Kawhi play all twenty four, I'm still knocking. I'm still knocking. It's fantastic. And defensively, I thought they were sharp from the get go. The Warriors, though, they scared me in this game by coming back. You know, the Clippers were in command for the whole game. First quarter was pretty even, 29-28 Clippers. But the second quarter, the Clippers were just insane offensively. Harden and Kawhi leading that charge. Norman Powell as well. A little bit of Russ. 40-28 to in the second quarter. So we went to halftime up 69-56. to And the Warriors made a little push, especially at the end of that third quarter. And when Chris Paul made that three to end the third, my, of course, if anybody's unfamiliar or not paying attention right now to the NBA, Draymond Green uh, suspended and was out. But with Paul George out, Amir Coffey stepped into that starting role, which I was very surprised by because he's not even been in the rotation this season. And Amir went back to 2022 Amir and showed us exactly what he's capable of doing when he gets minutes. It's crazy how deep this team is that we have guys like Bones Highland, Amir Coffey, and Brandon Boston Jr., who's obviously been injured, but those guys are not even touching the floor. They would get into many teams' rotations. Many teams. But, God, where was I at? Oh, the end of the third quarter. I was getting nervous. I was getting really nervous because when Chris Paul made that shot, as everybody knows, there are four teams in the NBA – you can kind of throw Philly, Miami, and New York on the outside looking in of this, where they they'll bring like thirty percent of their fans. Like the, the stadium will be like thirty percent their fans, and then seventy percent Clipper fans. But there are four NBA teams that make it about a fifty fifty split: the Lakers, the Celtics, and the Chicago Bulls. Now you can add the Golden State Warriors to that mix because of Steph Curry. They were already in close proximity, and you have guys from Northern California here in Southern California, but now that they have the Curry fanboys, again, I, the fanboy test, if you ever go to a basketball game, how, what, how loud are the cheers when the team scores versus when the player that everybody's here to see scores? And you know, yeah, it was pretty loud when the Warriors scored in this game, but when Steph Curry scored, it was extra loud. And you know, there's going to be Curry stands in the building. He's got one of the biggest stand bases. So that noise after the third quarter ended with that buzzer sounded, it made me feel that uneasiness and reminder of why I don't go to Clipper Laker games much, Clipper Warrior games much, or I've never and why I've never been to a Clipper Celtics game and why I've only been to one Clippers Bulls game. Because the amount of opposing fans gets me actually aggravated. Like it, it boils my blood. Like to the point where I'm just like yet ready to argue with anybody and just like I'm making bad decisions at that point. That's how fired up I get about this stuff, man. Like seriously, it's not healthy. But it, it makes me so mad. So I was like, we need, to, we need to win this game. We need to. And you know what? That lineup in the beginning of the fourth, Daniel Tice, Norman Powell, Terrence Mann, 
Russ and Harden was really shaky. Then we made the switch and put Amir in for Terrence because he was shooting the three ball better. And he was also defending really well. But it was really just that we were missing shots to me. And of course, we we're a little bit small. But the main thing was we were, that we were missing shots. But we were also conceding that 1-5 pick and roll. We were switching our centers onto Chris Paul. Like, that was part of the scheme. Because he's not quick enough to even get by bigs a lot of times. But he's still clever enough to weave his way and create space with his handle to get shots off on Tice. And that's what he was doing. And when Zoo and Kawhi came back in the game, it really stabilized things and helped us get across the finish line. Even though the guy that actually brought us home was Norman Powell. Him attacking closeouts, him being aggressive, that one floater he had going to his left... That was not an easy shot because if anybody plays basketball at any level, you can literally just go outside at the, the closest hoop near you and try it. Go left full speed and then shoot with your right hand. It's very difficult because you've got to throw it basically behind you. And that's not an easy shot, but Norman Powell, he has it down. And I just thought he was so big. And then defensively, huge plays made by Kawhi and James Harden. And coming up, going to be talking more in depth about a historic night. For the beard as the Clippers win it 121 to 113 and win both games against the Warriors this season at home. They are now 10 and 3 at home. I gotta tell you a little something about Dave. When I wasn't making as much money, you know, a couple years ago, sometimes I was afraid I wouldn't even be able to afford some of these Clipper tickets. At one time or another, we all need a little financial help. That's why Dave is great. Dave can get you cash when you need a hand between paychecks and can help you build credit by settling extra cash advances on time. Dave is the banking app that's leveling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. Download Dave today at dave.com slash locked on MBA. That's dave.com slash locked on MBA. You can get five you can get up to five hundred dollars in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. Download the Dave app now or go to dave.com slash locked on NBA. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve.member FDIC. Clippers win this one 121 to 113 in what was a very electric atmosphere at Staples Center. A sellout after two straight games of no sellouts against the Denver Nuggets, Portland Trailblazers. Actually, three. And Sacramento Kings, so three straight games, no sellout, which is very disappointing. Again, people, you have a super team in front of you. And if there's any doubt about that now, you need to shove it in the trash can because James Harden is very clearly a star player in this league still. Will he make the all-star team? I previously said I don't think he's going to make it. But the way he's playing right now, he has a strong case. It's James Harden's night, and we got to talk about that. He was just unbelievable on both ends of the floor. So when I was referring to what I was surprised by, it wasn't just his good hands. His effort level, especially these last couple of games defensively, has been so high. I haven't seen him play this good of defense literally like ever. Now, of course, I haven't had James Harden on my team. So even though I've watched damn near every single playoff game of his career because I don't miss playoff basketball. So I've watched like damn near every single one. And of course, nationally televised games for many years with James. But I don't doubt, by the way, that in the 2018 season, when they had that kind of defensive personnel around him, that he was a, that he had probably had some kind of games like these. But James Harden having four blocks is definitely not on the bingo card most nights. I mean, the guy had such active hands, and they were in very crucial moments too, not just one-on-one, -on -one, but there were times where, you know, when you play against the Warriors and Klay Thompson and Steph Curry come off screens, you need to throw two at them at the perimeter a lot of times, and that leaves the roller open, wide open sometimes. And I thought that the Clippers' rotations, albeit maybe two or three times they weren't there rotating quickly enough, but that's going to happen throughout the course of a game, especially against guys like Steph and Clay. 
But for the most part, they were so good. And there were so many times where Harden was that last line of defense. And I criticized Harden a lot, and rightfully so, when he first came to the Clippers in the first couple of games. His rotations at the rim were, like, non-existent. Like, he was just there, but he wasn't there. He wasn't making any play at the ball, wasn't trying to take a charge, not doing anything, was late. But in this game, sharp, active hands. You can't bully him because of how strong he is. There were some times where Kaminga was trying to post him up, and he wasn't even getting a shot off. I thought his defensive effort was just so spectacular. He had that block against Pods late. He even had moments one-on-one -on -one against various guys. He was playing at such a high level. And then offensively, his three ball was really falling. You know, against Sacramento, I think he was two for eight. So he was kind of due for a good shooting night from three, and he had a great one. Five for six from three. Six for 12 from the field. Here's the stat that I'm actually kind of surprised at because I'm just looking at the box score for the first time right now. 11 for 12 from the line. That's vintage James Harden. Vintage James Harden. Now, I have to say, just being as an unbiased spectator, even though I'm completely biased, the calls that he gets, I mean, everybody knows how I feel about it. That's one of the reasons why I'm like, you know, not a huge fan of his actual game is that some of the calls he gets, I'm just like, oh my God, dude. But it's on my side now, so I can't complain, right? And plus, if there's anybody that deserves good karma for bad officiating over the years, it's the LA Clippers, who in the Donald Sterling era, and rightfully so, why not, we got no respect from officials. I remember when I was growing up and I was watching games back on KTLA, which we're obviously back, back again with the KTLA stuff, but I'd be watching games on KTLA with my uncle, who's a diehard Lakers fan, diehard, but he's not a Clipper hater. And he was like, the Clippers just get no respect from the refs. And so we've obviously, I could go on and on about the playoff games that were changed because of officiating. But having James Harden now, the most notorious foul-baiting superstar of his era, or maybe of all time, honestly, it, it feels good when, when we're getting those benefit of those calls. 12 free throws. And by the way, if you're, if you're going to go in the comments and be like, all of those are fouls, you, you hater. I haven't seen all the replays. I was at the game. I'm not even just talking about tonight, though. I'm just talking about in general sometimes. And it's the same with Norman Powell. But, like, I didn't realize how much of a foul baiter Norman Powell was. He was on the Clippers. James Harden, everybody everybody and their mother knows his tactics. But it's just funny the three-point fouls he gets. And the best part, he's good at free throws. 11 for 12 on the field. He played 42 minutes. So if I have any concern, if there's only one con, James Harden and Kawhi Leonard are playing really heavy minutes. And in Kawhi Leonard's case, his defense and his effort has just been insane. And he's played every game. But James Harden, I just thought the way he was finding the open man, passes in pick and roll were fantastic, pocket passes, but just passes when the defense would be sleeping, over the top, back door. There were just so many times where I said, that's a great pass by James. Oh, what a dime. You know, these kind of things. And James Harden, in my opinion, sorry Westbrook fans, is the best passer we've had since CP. And it was really funny seeing CP play for the Warriors in this game live because I still remember like it was yesterday, almost 10 years ago, the last time I saw Steph Curry live before, before two, uh, Thursday night, game seven. I went to every home game of that series. And to see CP3 playing for the Warriors with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson is just never in my wildest imagination. And then why Russ, Harden, and Paul George on the Clippers? Like, what reality am I in right now? This is like a simulation. <laughs> but historic Harden, the reason why I say historic Harden is because we celebrated his milestone of scoring 25,000 career points, which is just unbelievable. Uh, I saw so many graphics about, like, he's the first to do this since, like, you know, the only player to put up this stat line. And by the way, let's read the stat line. 28 points, 7 rebounds, 15 assists. 15. That's ridiculous. I was seeing that he, I was saying that he was on triple double watch in the first quarter, but he literally had nine assists at halftime. He was throwing a dime clinic. 28.7 rebounds, 15 assists, one steal, four blocks. He did have four turnovers though. But when you throw 15 assists, that's a four to a little even over a four to one assist to turnover ratio actually no it's almost a four to one assist to turnover ratio if he had had 16 assists but yeah I mean, it's still incredible right shooting 50 percent from the field five for six from three and 11 for 12 from the line Twenty five thousand points it just doesn't get better than that and obviously like anytime a clipper player has scored twenty five thousand points in their career 
That's a big deal for us, man. I always say perspective. Like, remember where we came from. It's a big deal to even have this guy on the roster, no matter what I thought of him before he was here. No matter what my opinion of his game is. No matter what your opinion of his game is. Because I know there's a lot of Clipper fans that didn't like his game. They may still not like his game. But we want the Clippers to win. And right now, James Harden's a huge reason that's happening. Huge. He was unbelievable in this game. My player of the game. You could argue it was the other guy, though, that we're going to talk about coming up. I got to tell you a little something about prize picks. Prize picks is the best daily fantasy sports platform in North America. And here's how it works. All you got to do is pick two to five players and predict if they'll score more or less than their prize picks projection. With basketball season here, you can now pick projections across football and basketball from the specials league, a league created specifically for combo projections. That includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, you can take Kawhi Leonard with the more in points, and you can take Jared Goff for touchdown passes. PrizePix even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets hurt. How convenient is that? Just go to prizepix.com slash LockedOnNBA and use code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepix.com slash LockedOnNBA and use code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, Clippers winning this one, 121-113. to 113. Let's talk more about this one. Clippers' fourth quarter was a closely contested affair. It wasn't very high scoring. It was 22-20. to 20. Clippers won that quarter after losing the third, 37-30. to 30. So defense let up a little bit. But the reason why the, the Warriors went off in the third was just Klay Thompson was going off. And let me tell you something. If Klay Thompson was shooting like this throughout the season, the Warriors' record would be a lot better than it is. Warriors now in a little bit of a crisis. They actually have the opposite record as the Clippers, 10 and 14. Klay Thompson in this game was awesome. 30 points. Oh, my God. I like how some, you know, I should do this more often, even though it's a little bit like you can say it's unprepared. But when I go to the games, like I'm just not, I, there's so many things I'm doing. I'm worried about the vlog for Dime Dropper, which, by the way, is going to be out tomorrow or today when you're listening to this, and it's going to be hilarious. There was pumped up fans, man. Some altercations, you know, inside and outside the arena. It was a whole mess. Um, and if you're wondering, the ratio is about 50 50. But Clay Thompson scoring 30. Oh, the re- what I was saying was, yeah, not looking at the box score. It's pretty funny like to see my reaction when I'm looking at it for the first time when I'm recording. Clay Thompson had 30, and it felt like 30. 9 for 15 from the field, 8 for 12 from 3. Jesus Christ. 60% from the field and 66 from 3. 4 for 4 from the line in 32 minutes. I'll tell you who was really disappointing in this one. Steph Curry. He got pretty locked up. And let me just name the guys that took their chance, uh, took their turns at him. James Harden, yeah, yeah. There wasn't one time, in my opinion, where Harden got abused by Curry. And he wasn't guarding him that much. Like, And he's not obviously guarding him with some switches but or cross matches in transition. But there wasn't one time where I said he got cooked. Then, Terrence Mann, of course. How about the brewmaster, Amir Coffey? And then the main one, Kawhi Leonard. As of about the end of the first quarter... He was guarding Steph more than anyone. And Steph had trouble getting clean looks off. He had some good looks that he usually makes that he misses. But we kept him out of rhythm. And one thing, you know, I never go this route because I think the Warriors have played such incredible team basketball and played what I believe is the right way to play basketball. Movement and player, ball movement and player movement throughout their dynasty. They should have done more, give the ball to Steph Curry and run pick and rolls and get, you know, attack certain matchups because it felt like Steph just didn't have the ball enough. And yeah, Clay had it going in the third, but he just didn't. And I felt very comfortable with that. But that being said, it's with the way Kawhi has been defending, it's not like he would have had guaranteed buckets or guaranteed good looks if he was on the ball more. Kawhi Leonard right now is playing at an MVP level. Let me say that again. Kawhi Leonard is playing at an MVP level and rightfully got the MVP chance started by what section? 207. Maybe, again, I really believe, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but I really believe that having a section that's dedicated to having Clipper fans make noise for the entire game, that makes sure that's never dead silent in the arena, the Brody chance that you hear when he comes into the game, that's all us. Like, there's no one else doing that. 
And we star in those Kawhi chants. He deserves those chants of MVP. And you know what the MVP thing that everybody holds against Kawhi is? Or the thing about MVP that people hold against him? Is that game, games played thing. Well, right now he's on track. And just the way, the, the biggest thing I was afraid of when we traded Rocco and Nico was that we'd have to ask more of Kawhi defensively. And the amount of minutes he's playing, what he has to do offensively, his mid-post game, his turnarounds, like, oh, he was so cash. But then also defending elite players so much. So impressive. So impressive. My only fear is can he do it the whole season? It's a really big workload compared to what he's had in the past. And by the way, Boardman gets paid. That offensive rebound late in the game sealed the deal. I got to give some other shout-outs, though. Let me just talk about Kawhi, though, stat line. So, yeah, Steph had 17 points on 5 for 17 shooting. And here you go, 3 for 13 from 3. That's terrible. And Steph just wasn't getting in the paint that much. Like, the Warriors, we saw it against the Lakers last year when they lost in the playoffs. They don't get to the paint much. They're too small and they're old. How did Chris, they're too small and old? Answer, Chris Paul. <laughs> I know why they brought in Chris Paul to limit turnovers and stabilize the second unit because Jordan Poole lost control of the, of the car last year. But the Warriors need to totally get younger. Kaminga was one of their best players in this game. He uh, had 15 points on 50% shooting, 5 for 10. And even though Brandon Pajimski was 2 for 11, that dude fights. 4 points, 7 rebounds, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, 3 steals, and a block. I saw that kid play at Santa Clara. Remember, if you actually, if you go back and look at the deep summer archives of Locked On Clippers when everybody was like taking their, their tea break, their tolerance break from the Clippers or any Clipper-related content after we lost to Phoenix, I was talking about the pre-draft uh, talk and Brandon Pajimski was actually one of the people I was hoping the Clippers could get where they got Kobe Brown and the Warriors did a great job of realizing that Pajimski was better than that and they took him in the top 20, so... He's a very good player. Now he's getting 35 minutes starting when when uh, Wiggins got taken out of the starting lineup. That was wild. And and by the way, Wiggins, he doesn't even look like the same player right now. I mean, he was open for threes, and I was so comfortable he was going to miss. He was 0 for 4. And even defensively, he's not looking as strong. James Harden, there were a couple of times he wanted him on the switch. So the Warriors, they, their point of attack defense is weak. It felt like Harden was getting whatever he wanted, to be honest. And then Kawhi... He had 27 points, 8 rebounds, just 2 assists because obviously, you know, he's finishing plays, not really. But I will say this. Kawhi was making such good reads out of double teams in this game. Such good reads. There were just times where guys didn't hit. But one steal and a block, 27 points, 8 boards on 9 for 16 shooting, 2 for 4 from 3 and 7 for 9 from the foul line. Of course, you'd like him to hit one more of those free throws because 7 for 9 is, is not good enough for Kawhi, but... Over 50% shooting from the field, 50% from three. I like that he shot 12 twos and only four threes, even though he's a great three-point shooter. I just like when Kawhi's in his mid-range bag, his post-game bag, getting high-percentage shots. That's what makes him so good in the deep rounds of the playoffs. He gets to his spots, and he has spots. And the way he's defending, oh my God. I can't say enough right now, to be honest. I really can't. Three offensive rebounds for the board man. How about uh, if it's a Zubats, by the way? Under the radar kind of performance, but very solid again. Protecting the rim, he had two blocks, 10 points, eight rebounds, two assists. He's making better reads out of that short roll than he was early in the season. His chemistry with James Harden's going up by the game. He shot five for 10 from the field in 30 minutes. Very solid performance by Zu, who has been fantastic of late. Fantastic. Daniel Tice. You know, he actually had some really good minutes in the first half. Had that steal that led to a Russell Westbrook three that gave us the lead in the first quarter. But in the second half, even though he works hard on defense, the scheme was putting him in a tough position, guarding Chris Paul one-on-one. -on -one, and the Warriors were attacking the rim a lot in that stretch because they know that Daniel Tice, he's not really going to deter them much. I mean, he goes up vertically. He gets off the ground pretty well. But it's nothing compared to having the seven-footer of Ivica Zubats. So Tice in this game, he had four points. One rebound, one assist, one steal, one block. At least, you know, he's he's red and zero turnovers, so he's clocking in at each stat. 0 for 2 from the field, though. 0 for 1 from 3. 4 for 4 from the line, though. I thought he still was solid in what we need him to do. Because, again, if you don't have Tice, we're not as good of a team. Kobe Brown, just 7 minutes. He was 1 for 1. I don't even remember when he scored. 2 points. He was a plus 14 in those 7 minutes, but he was very quiet. Russell Westbrook, another sub-20-minute game for him, but I thought his energy was phenomenal. 
especially that first half. You know, he came in and scored five points in like 30 seconds. And then he blocked Chris Paul to end the second quarter. He and Harden actually shared the court a good amount in this game. First half, I thought the stint was pretty good. Second half, I think it was the bigger reason was just we were missing shots, but that was when the Warriors kind of made their run. Russ had a really nice drive and kick to Harden in the right corner in the second half for three. And I love how not hesitant Harden's been in terms of letting it fly on the catch and shoots from three since the Sacramento game on the road. But Russ, I just thought, again, that energy, that, that life that the building always wants. And he stayed efficient again. Nine points, four rebounds, two assists, and a block. That block being that one I talked about against Chris Paul. Two turnovers for Russ, so not as bad. Four for seven from the field and one for two from three. Again, I love when he's not shooting too many threes. 50%, I'll take that all day. Four for seven from the field, I'll also take that all day. No free throw attempts. Obviously, you'd like to see him get to the line. Clippers again with a fantastic free throw shooting game. 26 for 30, 87%. They shot 41% from three, 13 for 32, and 51% from the field, 41 for 81. So just in all three shooting categories, Clippers were just awesome. Warriors, 43.5% from the field, 35.6% from three, and 17 for 19 from the line. They shot 11 more field goals than the Clippers, but 11 less free throws than the Clippers. Terrence Mann, he was a minus 22. Oh, my God. It didn't feel like he was that bad, though. It just felt like he was missing his open threes. 0 for 4 from 3. But, again, I, I my eye test said his defense helps. And his presence in the starting lineup helps. Two points, three rebounds, two assists, and a steal. I think he helped do a good job of keeping Curry at bay. No pun intended. 20 minutes for him. His three balls is concerning me, though. It's been a while. But I still believe. I really do. And Amir Coffey, man. What a show from him on both ends. Guarding Klay Thompson and chasing him over screens, moving his feet well, right place, right time, being aggressive. And he passed up so many threes, though. He needs to let those fly. Four for 11 from three. That's not that bad. Just keep the defense honest. I don't care. 18 points, four rebounds on six for 15 shooting in 29 minutes with a brewmaster. Man, could he take Kobe Brown's minutes? He's not the same kind of build. But would it make that big a difference? He can guard at the point of attack. There might be a place for Amir on this team, especially with the way we're playing Kawhi Harden, Paul George, so many minutes. I don't know. And Norman Powell, the guy that took us home, 21 points, five rebounds, two assists, one steal on nine for 13 shooting. Talk about efficient. One for four from three, so miss some open ones there. Two for two from the line. Norman Powell with a spectacular performance and in the fourth quarter brought us home in 36 minutes. It's a great time to be a Clipper fan. The super team is looking good right now. 11 out of our last 14. And we got New York on Sunday, Saturday. I'll be there again. And you know what? I think we're going to win again. With or without Paul George. And that, that is the biggest reason why you get out, when you get James Harden. And that's one thing I never denied. In games that Paul George is out, James Harden absolutely can help you win games. You're adding another star to the mix. But yeah, MVP Kawhi, historic Harden, six straight. However you want to put it, the age-old proverb continues, go Clippers. But actually, you got to make sure you comment on the YouTube video, hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for 4,000, guys. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. It is a blessing to be doing what I'm doing, and I don't take it for granted. I dreamt of stuff like this as a kid, man. Since Elton Brand, Katino Mobley, Sam I Am, Quinton Ross, Mike Taylor, <laughs> Marty Collins, Brevin Knight, Dan Dickow, Richie Fromm, I'm busting the names out the woodworks. Comment any names of players that were that were Clippers when you were a fan that makes you think, man, we really got James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Kawhi, and Paul George, and I'm still rooting for the same damn team. You deserve it more than anyone. Listen, you sports arena people, I am spoiled compared to you. You are the GOATs. The age-old problem continues. Go Clippers. And by the way, please check out my vlog on Friday, Clippers Warriors. It was so much fun. Peace. I'll see you guys on Saturday. Go New York. Go. Nope. No, no good. No, no, no. No, go New York. Go Clippers.